Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today's full length, full featured review is all about the MSI GS60 Ghost Pro. So this is a laptop that we have reviewed before and if you caught that review we have uh, a lot of the same. However, with any real popular laptop model they do re-release it with upgrades in the hardware to keep up with the current hardware spec. So this is no exception to that rule. This particular GS60 does have a new Intel Core i7 CPU with more CPU power to help push those video cards and any other benchmarks you might have a little bit further. Also, it has a nice 4K resolution LED LCD screen, so we'll cover all of the hardware in detail as we get to it. Now, speaking of upgrades, this is a good time to mention that all the reviews are always based on the out-of-box experience you'd get purchasing a plain vanilla laptop. So, this is the MSI spec. However, Gentech PC does have a customized ordering process, so if you see something you want to bump up a little bit, like you want a faster SSD, you want more RAM, you want to do a higher capacity drive, all of those upgrades can be incorporated directly into your order with us so that when you get your new laptop, you already have those upgrades installed. And the greatest advantage of this is not only do we do all the work for you, but it's fully covered under a warranty when sometimes doing those upgrades on your own could void your warranty. So just a little food for thought and be sure to check it out the next time you're on our website. So now back to the unboxing as there's not a whole lot going on. You see we do have our standard double boxing process here. Our outside plain box with our decorated interior box. The MSI GS60 if you recall is MSI's ultra thin lightweight gaming laptop. So this isn't their most powerful unit but it is very good for mobility and portability. As far as included accessories. Besides our power adapter and the warranty information and driver's disk, the only thing we get is the sleeve for the laptop, so not a whole lot of extras in this package, but it does include everything you need to get started. So with our power adapter in hand here, you can get a quick look at the specifications for the voltage and the wattage. Also, this is one of those power adapters that has the thin profile, so it's easier to pack into a smaller bag, like a messenger style bag. So that's everything for the unboxing. Now we're going to go ahead and jump over into our system BIOS and show you what kind of features and options you have inside of there. Welcome to the system BIOS for the GS60 Ghost Pro. Right now we're just kind of flipping through all of our little informational tabs here. You can see what kind of hardware we have on board and what version of the BIOS that we're running. As we continue going through all of our BIOS options, we'll point out a few of the important details or interesting details. AHCI mode is your default SATA mode here as compared to some high-end gaming laptops using RAID. The good thing about this is it makes it easier to swap out your disks without worrying about destroying your RAID setup. As we get a little bit further along here, looking at our boot mode there, you'll see we're using EFI. That's pretty much the standard now with Windows 8. So before with Windows 7 and earlier you might see legacy quite often but the times are changing and it's time to get familiar with the EFI type of setup for your operating systems. So now we've got the unit fully powered on and you can see it in all of its glory. It's a very beautiful laptop. We got the nice black for the palm rest area and the keyboard colors. We have the multicolor LED backlit keyboard shining through even in full room lighting you can see the LEDs shining through quite brightly. The screen is very bright and beautiful as well. We have our sticker badge on the right hand side for the Core i7. Our status LEDs in the front right hand side. It's a very large touchpad with the left and right clicks integrated into it rather than separated. And our power button in the center. The screen does have a glossy coating on it so it will reflect light so keep that in mind when it comes to your angles and being near sunlight. Now we'll do a quick wrap around tour of the edges to look at all of our interfaces for input and output. Our right hand side has our headphone and microphone, two USB 3.0 power port, the Kennington light port and one of our exhaust vents for cooling. The rear side has just cooling vents all down the way, no ports on that side. The lid you can see is slightly beveled and we have the MSI gaming logo in the center there. To the right hand side we have another exhaust vent the RJ45 for our local network connection. Then we have a mini display port, HDMI, SD card slot, and a USB 3.0 slot. So decent interfaces, pretty standard. 
Again, this is a very thin laptop. You can see just compared to the relative size of a USB port, it's not very thick. So it does limit the interfaces that you could put on a larger laptop. And just one more spin around now with the lid in the closed position. Gives you a great concept of just how thin and how pretty this laptop is. Now to put things on the scale so we can see exactly how heavy everything is. 4 pounds and 6 ounces for the laptop by itself. Of course you're going to usually travel with your power adapter when it comes to a gaming laptop. So let's include the weight of our charger as well. And so the whole package brings us to 5 pounds and 13 ounces. That is a very fair weight and should be quite easy for pretty much anybody to carry around most of the day. Especially in an appropriate bag like a backpack so you can put the weight on your shoulders. So we all know how competition drives the way that our products are manufactured and of course thinness is now a very popular element in gaming laptops. So while we have the light weight, let's see how thin we can make things. As you can see based on the tape measure and also the scale of our coins, the front of the laptop is about the size of a penny while the rear is about the size of a nickel. So it is indeed a very thin laptop making it easy to fit in sort of any kind of bag and uh, carry around handedly. Now let's get into the techie stuff. Into the device manager we can look at the details of the hardware that we have installed. You can see we do have integrated graphics. We have an HD 5600. But we have the NVIDIA GTX 970 mobile for a dedicated video card. We have Killer for both wired and wireless networking. So they call that the double shot from Killer. We have the Core i7 5700HQ for a CPU. And here is the display panel properties if you're interested in looking up the details on that online. This is a very well-rounded package. Everything comes together really well as far as hardware. You can see the resolution here, 3840 by 2160 on this small display. That's a very high pixel density, so it makes for a very beautiful screen. We're going to go ahead and kick off some of our benchmarks now. This will give us our benchmark scores. Also, it's going to give us a place to start for the sound and noise level benchmark testing that we always do. Remember that while we're testing these, we have our noise meter right next to the exhaust of the laptop, giving us the absolute worst case scenario. Also, we have the laptop under load with benchmarks. So the best way to take these numbers and make sense out of them is to watch more than one review from us. That way you can compare one laptop that you're familiar with against one you're not familiar with and get a good idea of the differences in the noise levels. Sometimes you do see disparity between noise levels on the left and right hand side on these dual cooling fan solutions because usually one side is responsible for the CPU while the other is responsible for the GPU. And depending on how much that distribution of heat is uh, handled by the system, you might notice that the fans spool higher on that particular side or the other. As you can see here, the right hand side from the rear happens to be a little bit louder. Now that 3D Mark 11 has finished, we have our score, performance score of 9,221. That's a very good score considering our hardware inside. We have our GPU and CPU-Z information for you as well, so you can check out our current core speed here on CPU-Z and the full information on that new i7 CPU. As we get over here to the CPU hardware monitor, you can see our voltages or temperatures. Temperatures are the most important part of this benchmark other than the performance scores just to make sure that hardware stays adequately cooled. 80 to 85 degrees Celsius on the CPU is good and down on the video card it reached 77 degrees Celsius. So all those temperatures are actually really good and that's great to see because oftentimes on the smaller profile laptops they don't have the same cooling power that the thicker laptops have. Next up is going to be Fire Strike, so we're really stepping up the crunching of the CPU and GPU here. This is a very demanding benchmark. Our score was 6,019, and the great thing about Fire Strike is it gives you tons of information. 
as far as your scores and the temperatures. Now running the same temperature monitor as before, the CPU is more or less the same, up to 86 degrees Celsius max, and our video card up to 77 degrees Celsius max. So our temperatures are still looking really good at this point. Again, Firestrike has its own set of readings that you can look into in detail with frames per second, CPU and GPU temperatures. And now we're jumping straight over to another new feature. This is a new sound processing panel. This is a new technology that promises to be better than any of the others. Let you tweak the sound and get suppose of real surround sound results right out of your laptop speakers. So it already does have the Dyn Audio speaker system, which is some of the best we've ever heard on a laptop. And now the software processing has been enhanced. For us, it's nice to see that MSI is trying to push the envelope with sound and realize that it's just as important to have great sound when it comes to your games and videos and music as it is the graphics processing. So uh, pushing the envelope a little bit further, good for you MSI, and let's hope that this works out and it does show an improved difference. All right, now it's time to get the screwdriver kit out and get the elbow grease rubbed in, take apart the MSI GS60. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, you do have a warranty sticker and it does say your warranty is void if you tamper with it. So that's why we would push to have us upgrade the system for you because if we do the upgrade for you, you do not lose your warranty. Now once you get it open, you'll have to take the screws out of all the perimeter there so you have tons of screws and you will notice they are of different lengths. So if you are taking apart your system, take special care to notate which screws came from where so you put it back together with the right ones. So once we lift that cover off, you can see what we have inside. We have a very large battery in the bottom right corner there. Our speakers on left and right sides. And then on the top left and right sides, we have our cooling fans. Near the center area, we do have our two and a half inch hard drive. That's for our mass storage needs. Now most of the things are actually on the other side of the motherboard, so we're going to have to do a little bit more disassembly to go and see all of those things. So we've had to disconnect several ribbon cables all over the motherboard to uh, get to the point where we're at now where we can actually start to get a little bit further in our disassembly. This would not be something we recommend for an end user to go to this level of disassembly because at this point you are prone to cause damage or not have your system go back together properly again unless you have the right tools and know what you're doing. Now that we have all the different anchor points undone, we can actually flip the motherboard over to get to the components on the other side. Over here, the main things to notate are, you'll see that we have our M2 SSD on the upper left side. You notice that there is one in place and one free slot, so that leaves you room to upgrade. Also, behind that little plate in the center, that's where we have our system RAM at. So the system RAM is, is not very accessible on this particular laptop. So again, one of those things that you don't really need to upgrade since it's already fully loaded, but if you did want to upgrade it, it's going to be difficult to get to. So as I'm sure you've probably noticed that scrolling bar going across the bottom of the video that says this is the end, and that is unfortunately the end of the GS60 review. We hope it was able to answer all of your questions and cover most of the important information you had about the GS60. Of course, if you want to learn more, then visit our website gentechpc.com. And there on the product page, you can find the full product specifications, the current pricing and availability, and of course, all the upgrade options. Of course, if you have more detailed questions that you would like to ask us, feel free to post them here in our video comments, and we'll try to answer them for you and everybody else. And if you need to ask one-on-one -on -one questions, then feel free to contact us by phone or email, and we'll always be happy to help you out. So once again, we just want to remind you this was Gen Tech PC, and we'll see you next time.